Kia ora and welcome to the Aotearoa Rugby Pod. Big show for you today. Plenty to get into, including Will Jordan. The big differences he made to the Crusaders that you might not have noticed. Talk about the kicking game, the short kicking game that a lot of teams use so effectively. Julian Sabia, the new equal, top Super Rugby try scorer. Let's look at the Mount Rushmore of power wingers. Akira Ioane made a big impact. How does he fit into the All Black selections? And could the All Black selections, especially on the bench, have a different weighting this year to suit the amount of skill that's within the side and your viewer questions. Plenty of them coming through and probably too many of them actually for us to answer. James Parsons, we'll try our best to get to them though. We will, we will. You will. And over in Japan, Bryn Hall. Welcome back again, Bryn. You've had a week to recover. You're uh, you're well and truly over the season. No, I'm good, Matt. I've had a, um, a lot of training, so heading off to Europe very shortly. So I've had to be able to uh, get in the sauna and get some um, kind of training done at least before I head over there. But Jip, it's actually good to see the buff and top some larges back. Yeah. For the duration of the... The, the, the boss was sick of seeing me in the baggy one, so she thought she'd throw on the tight one today. It would have been like Brent Webb getting on his Warriors jersey back in the day. <laughs> he, he, did you need help uh, pulling it down? Uh, he's just trying to deflect from his, <laughs> his rubbish fade that he got. Someone's attacked him. <laughs> OK, let's get on to Will Jordan. Will Jordan made a massive difference. Oh. Uh, last week, Brent was talking about the difference he makes to the attack. Crusaders attack the way he allows everyone around him to have more opportunities. Bryn, you watched that on the weekend. You felt like a prophet to me. Uh, were you pretty happy with the way that he went? Oh, look, I think he'd be pretty stoked. Um, you know, eight months layoff, and to be honest, it didn't look like he missed a beat. I think, you know, we probably didn't even get to probably see um, the, the massive line breaks and being able to um, break the line through his counter-attack ability, even though he was over 100 metres out on you know, eight or nine carries. Um, I think it's the ability that he's brought to this Crusaders team that they were missing. Um, and that's not to say that Ferg wasn't doing a great job. Um, it's just the difference between between Will Jordan and his ability to be able to counter-attack and see space and really, I guess, test the defensive line. And then you're looking at the set phase tries as well, one off the scrum and one off the line out. Um, but I just want to give a special mention to David Harvilli in those, in those clips. Um, hopefully you can clip it, Ross, around how square he's getting in the lines that are from the, the loose four, the number eight, and then also Braden Enel's ability to be able to open up that gap for Will to be able to then um, penetrate from that. He's one of the few players that can run at speed with the ball in two hands. A lot of guys will, will catch and tuck and then need that arm to drive, but he's just ball in two hands the whole time. Swerves, gets that space, and then has the ability to manipulate the defence to get the pass away, and if they don't, he's an ability to keep running at the same speed. And I think you know that was a massive... Um, weapon for them at the start of the game. And when Bryn says he makes other players look better, I think it's the best we've seen of Maka Springer. Like, Maka Springer is an outstanding talent, um, really um, shone for Tasman, but hasn't really had that sort of game that he had on the weekend. And it's purely because the defence is so fixated on what Will's doing, what Richie's doing, the line that Braden Eno is running. And all of a sudden, you know, Richie has to pick that pass for, for him to get um, that try. But... I still think it, it allowed him to be his very best, his very best self, and he'll get so much confidence from that. I felt all of the players, to be fair, in that backline was one of their better games, and I'm not putting that all on Will. It's a bit of a jump, um, bit of speculation, but the threat of him early definitely created um, opportunities for others. You could see a difference in the shape, Bryn, from the Crusaders. It looked more like the Crusaders we know, with with Richie hovering out the back and just being able to play how he wanted to play. I think any time you can have three pivots, really, and that's what Will kind of brings. Not only is he obviously very fast when he has the ball in hand, um, he's pretty much like another pivot with great communication skills coming into Davey and into, and into Richie. And then we haven't even talked about Noah Hotham and his, his ability of work, how he was able to play the game, because when you've got collectively three guys that are continually talking and seeing the space, you look at Will Jordan's example when Richie puts in that little chip kick We'll touch on that with the Chiefs where they were able to do it against the Highlanders. But, you know, Will's seeing that space and he, the only way that Richie is, is able to kick that ball into that space is that Will's calling for it. Now, he didn't get it. He didn't regather it. But if you look at it, the bounce of the ball and it went the other way, um, they could have scored off that. So that's the thing that Will does. He's got a great ability to be able to um, to see the space, but then also put others, like you're talking about Mecca Springer and his ability to be able to then uh, to score tries and be able to influence the game, along with Leicester scoring two tries as well. Those passes weren't easy. You know, I know he used to be a halfback at school, Will Jordan, but they were long passes and they were sharp. Yeah, they were, they were trace bullets. And again, he's not turning his body. Like, Bryn talks about square hips and why that's important to understand is because the defender sees you turn your body, they almost know they can corral you to the sideline or you're going to pass. Mm. And he keeps square hips and just passes that bullet. Uh, uh, I know someone that would really love to see that pass would be Mick Byrne. He loved a good uh, square hip pass um, in his day with us. But, man, it was, it was 
Yeah, it's not as easy as he makes it look. I remember he'll probably give, give me a bit of stick for this, but when we were going through lockdown, the amount of balls that um, we had to trampoline and passing to each other because it was a bit of a work on a couple of years ago with his distribution skills to be able to put players away. But now, um, those passes that you're talking about under pressure, staying square, to be able to fix that last defender to then give the likes of Leicester and Mecca the ability to be able to score the try, um, it's a really hard act to do. And I think the improvement in his game around that, um, again, is just it's one of the reasons why Will um, is one of the best players in the world. You're just in the front yard in COVID lockdown, just throwing passes. Tom Christie, myself, and Will, yeah, we used to have competitions out of 10, um, getting it right on the money. Will actually early early down in lockdown wasn't um, wasn't that great. Tom Christie was actually beating it. But um, thankfully, the last two years, he's continued to improve. And now, now he's got a great distribution game. Bryn mentioned the short kicking game just before. We saw it with Bryn Gatland. We saw it with the Will Jordan. We also saw it from the Blues, maybe with a slightly wider kicking game as well. Why is this? Why are they finding so much space right now with those short kicking games? Oh, because I, I think we all know rush defence is a big thing, and, and players try to. You know, you even look at the depth of that pass. Um, I suppose from David to Richie to then Will, the depth of that pass to get on the outside of that defence. Like the defence had to come quite a long way. And what the kick does, either cross field, if your full back's centre and your winger's up, there's a lot of space in there. And you've got to back yourself as a winger to have the speed. Because this defender, if he's up, he's got to turn and go. You're going to pass him, sort of like we saw on the weekend with a number of options. Um, but then it also creates, you're, you're making the defence think. So if they don't adjust, you keep going there. But if they do adjust and, and mm. say the centre drops back for that little midfield kick that we saw from Daniel Rona to Sean Stevenson and all those then the opportunities to get it through the hands. So you still got to pick the right option, and, and that's where the communication from wingers is so crucial. If you get those comms early enough, they will see it, they'll back themselves and they'll call it, and then it's just about the 10 really pulling trigger. Because most nines now, well, predominantly in the New Zealand sides, is that the nine will either defend on the edge. So for example, in a four-man or five-man line out, predominantly in some teams, the, 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 first, the first phase or second phase, the halfback will be on the edge, defending the short side for a switch play. So then, that gives all the space that's in the middle of the field. So you've got your two pendulum in the back, which are probably about 40, 50 metres covering the kicks. But because the nine is either on the edge or he's coming into the kind of heart defence and is really tight and trying to marshal the troops for like rovers or being able to see, you know, your rock action leader, which is the first three defenders from the ruck. They're so fixated and concentrating on that. There's always that space just that's in behind him. You know, Rona and even the Chiefs have done that very well throughout the end, we're able to get through the Highlanders' um, ability because there was all that space there. And then the attacking kicks, I think, I think for the viewers, um, I guess next time you watch a game, the picture, I guess, for the wingers to call the kick space for an attacking kick, a cross field kick, is if the last defender is inside that 15 metres. If they're inside that last 15 metres, then it's, that's your kind of your cue to be able to communicate to your, your 12 or your 10 that the kick space is on. So I guess for the viewers watching forward, if you're going to watch the game and you see um, the cross field kicks, most of the times it's because that last defender is inside that 15 metre line and then it's a really good cue for the wingers to be able to put your hand up because sometimes it's really hard to communicate that the kick space is on and sometimes you need a cue around putting your hand up. Richie Mwang or Bowden Bear will have a quick look, they see a hand, it's not even a communication sometimes and then you're able to execute the kick. So those are some of the cues that I think um, the viewers, I think moving forward, if you see that, um, that's how it works. I think as well, Bryn, it's if that, if that fullback is too central or coming late, yep. That's a big cue because even if the wingers say on the sideline marking you, man on oh man, you're always going to win that race. So if that pendulum's not working, and that that blindside wing is not releasing the fullback early enough mm -hmm. to cover that kick space, that's where a lot of, you know, that's where Clark's one came from in the weekend. Yeah, just to go over the pendulum again, Bryn, because we've probably got some new viewers who haven't seen you explain this before. What does the pendulum mean? The guys in the backfield, right? So, um, you know. You'd probably have to think 10 or 15 years ago, it'll predominantly just be your fullback that's just roaming the backfield. But with how the, the game's going at the moment and being able to bring the line speed pressure, the pendulum is the two guys in the backfield. So it's usually a 15, where you might have a number 10. And those guys are in the middle of the at the back in the backfield using a pendulum to go back and field, to go back and forth across the field. So you're covering, I guess, all that distance in the backfield with two people. But again, when you've got good teams, like we talked about that if you don't get that right or even sometimes the halfback is involved in that pendulum just in behind trying to cover those chip kicks but you know some teams are doing some really good previews knowing that the halfback might be on the edge for one or two phases then you've got to be able to see that space so the pendulum game um, that's probably the best way that I'd explain it.
you, you mentioned the Rebels Brumbies. There was a moment in that where Noah Lolasio scores this outrageous try from the end of the earth, puts the ball down, addresses the camera and goes, Carter Gordon. <laughs> Carter Gordon. He said Carter Gordon's name, like basically questioning <laughs> Eddie Jones on screen saying, what were you thinking picking him and not me in the Wallaby squad? I think what a moment. based on his performance, I think we all know why. Yeah. Because he was trying to get a reaction and get some life back in his, you know, he'd, he'd probably become so accustomed to being picked. Yeah. Getting opportunities and it was just a prerequisite. And then the shock, you know, we've spoken about Tate McDermott and the way he's reacted, Jake Gordon. He's just another player. He was so hungry. You look at that try he scores, he almost steals it yeah. um, from the forward coming around the corner to get it and just punches that hole and scores. He, he singled this game out to yeah. make a point. And there should be no excuse for him, Jip. You know, he's been around long enough now. We've talked about it earlier when he was selected last year around giving him growth and the growth he has had in his game. He should be having those consistent performances every single week. He's got a great forward pack. He's probably got, you know, they, they are the best team in Australia. They're the best of the crop over there. Um, obviously, other the teams are improving, but there should be really be no excuse around Noah being able to kick on now and, and seeing those performances more consistently. And it's great. Look, hey, obviously he wasn't picked for a, for a squad with Eddie Jones, and it might be a method to his madness, being able to uh, light a few fires under some guys' asses. But, look, I think um, for Noah, I think it should be really, he should be really kicking in now and getting those consistent performances with the team that he's in, and we should see things moving forward because I think he's a great player, great talent, but that consistently that you talked about, Joe, I think it's time for him to really um, bite down the ball and get those consistent performances leading into this, um, leading into the World Cup as well. If that's Noah's, you know, maybe it's his true personality and he does have that belief in himself, but he's probably been trained to be a little bit more robotic. If that's who he is, let it out. Be his real self. Julian Savia. He called the all-time Super Rugby try scoring record with Israel Folau. Admittedly, did it in over 50 games more than Israel Folau, but let's not take away from the fact that that's still a lot of tries um, that he scored. Julian is a player who was unstoppable, then left, and we didn't see him for a long time because he had form issues and then went overseas and then has come back and has made his name as a really strong veteran within that side. Obviously a power winger, obviously stacks up when you look at the tries he scored at test level, second only to Doug Howlett for the All Blacks. Tremendous player. In the pantheon of Super Rugby, where does he sit? That's what we're going to look at now. As a power winger, who is on your Mount Rushmore of power wingers? It doesn't have to be Super Rugby, this could be of all time. Power wingers, who is oh. in the top four? Rupert oh, Southall and Booker oh, has to be there, doesn't he? Yeah. I mean, He's a power winger and you know, for the limited time he was in Super Rugby, he was pretty sensational. Um, Jonah Lomu yeah. um, was, was pretty good. I've got Savia in there. I think he's stood the mm. test of time and, and continuing to do well. And then the fourth, I sort of, there, there's a, I mean, there's, I was focusing more on Super Rugby, yeah. but just trying to think off the top of my head. Super um, Rugby's good. I've, I've got, I had Rokothoko in there, but I think Tuolangi yes. was pretty impressive, <laughs> especially when they bet Australia. Yep. Like he was a big reason when yep. Samoa were going really, really well. So if it was to be, he has to be in the yep. picture for me. I'd be in no hurry yeah. to tackle. Nandolo's another yeah. one as well. I think he, Serious he, power. He, Matt just... Duffy knows him really well. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, Duff. Yeah, you talk about Matt Duffy in that, in that um, video where he's obviously been bumped off. I wasn't too far behind him missing that tackle, actually. I was right next to him, so... Yeah, the top four that I that I had, I had Jonah, um, I had Rapini, not Dolo, and then I had Jordan as well. And then also a special mention to uh, Wasaki Naholo. I think his longevity of him at the Highlanders, he was a great power winger. Whenever we played him, he was always tough to tackle as well. When I did mine, I, I just felt bad that Vainga Tuigamala wasn't on there because he hasn't played Super Rugby. But he is mm. the forefather of the modern power winger. Before Jonah, mm. yeah. it was Vainga Tuigamala. You think about those tries he scored in the 91 World Cup and he's coming in and he's smashing people and he's doing that. Yeah. So I was like, I, I feel like... He probably invented the power winger. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I, well, he, he basically did, you know. Really, he was the guy who took it to the next level. So I think him and Jonah, obviously. I, I went with Nandolo as well. Um, I thought, you know, geez, he's just a monster of a human being. Just a pure power winger. You're just thinking about guys who are, like, bumping people off. That's Julian as well. Like I, I thought those four guys for me were as power wingers go, like 
pure. Yeah. And Tui Lungi as well. well yeah. Massive. Mate. Well, I, I think of Julian and Nandolo is probably in the same boat, is whenever you're playing those sides, there'd be a lot of review on stopping them. And yeah. that's almost when you know yeah. they're, they're very influential. Um, and the, boot, the focus would be always shutting down time and space, not letting them get a run up. Sorry, no, I was just going to say, the one thing with Nadolo made him so special, where obviously you brought up the question, Ross, around the power winger, he was obviously a massive power winger, but his kicking game, man, his left foot, his ability to be able to grab her um, and use that skill that he had made him, I think, as one of a, you know, not only a power winger, but a complete winger in that, and obviously ball in air. Um, that's why I just had Nadolo. He was um, he was a special talent, man, and grateful that obviously he was able to, to don the Crusaders jersey as well. At the complete opposite end of the scale, I have this memory of being in Christchurch and watching Damien McKenzie tackle Nadolo in the corner. And be like, how did that just happen? Like, because that man <laughs> is full of courage. <laughs> just so much courage. Oh, like you just man. see this little whippet flying across the field in this yeah. ginormous tank of human being and then bang in the corner and he pushed him out. And also, you talk about team first, that's, that's a definition of team first. Yeah, <laughs> did not care much for his own body no. on that particular occasion. Yeah. So, yeah, quite quite an incredible player, Damien McKenzie, considering how big Nadolo is. I, I, I wouldn't want to tackle any of those blokes. Have you found yourself underneath any of those blokes? Yes. Julian, Nadolo. Yeah. I just went low. Yeah. Very, very low. And got off the back of the line-out. Because I used to defend at the tail of line-out, so... When the wingers just come straight off, yeah. Um, there was a thing the Crusaders used to do. This shows how much of a rugby nerd that I remember this. But Kieran, that Kieran Reed and someone else, I think maybe Crockett, would drop off the tail of the line out. They'd hit Kieran Reed, and then Nandolo would come between them. Yeah. And I, I got the pleasure of having to take Nandolo that day, and I got him down, but he dragged me for a few meters. And thank you to you all for joining us once again on the Aotearoa Rugby Pod. Please catch us on YouTube, catch us on Sky, catch us on Rugby Pass. Please leave comments in the YouTube section. Send us an email, aotearoarugbypod at sky.co.nz or leave us a video submission at the submission feed you'll see along the bottom here. Thank you once again for joining us. Matewa.